you recommended some really good design books a while back. Do you have any other recommendations for design, composition, and general visual creativity? For books? Yeah. Uh, I think practice practice just having higher standards and, and um, breaking stuff down, looking at it, and um, just ex talking to yourself about why something works or why something doesn't work. And um, it's probably more valuable to look at a ton of, um, not even a ton, but a few, a few good things versus a glut of, of bad things. You don't need to, need to analyze every Adobe splash screen, but I would say um, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I really like that Amigre. I mean, if you, any, any graphic design from 80s, 90s, 2000s that's like, uh, you know, expensive is going to be good. Um, Amigre is really cool, but uh, just look at this, look at stuff. And um, this this guy's aesthetic is so ripped off that at this point, it's I don't even I don't even feel comfortable recommending people look at his stuff. But um, look at stuff that's good. I see the, the I see the prices went up drastically since I recommended this. Um, but look at stuff that's good and, and break down why it's good and like just think about it sit there thinking about it and, and also try to try to strip away the um, the let's call it styling the styling the aesthetic is like frosting on the cake and a lot of people the pro the reason why all this new shit is garbage all this like vaporwave the stuff people are making the AI augmented stuff and all the Y2K it's fucking garbage ass because this image right here the, the the style and the aesthetic is the thing that people see the thing that people don't see or the people they don't the thing they don't acknowledge or think about is the just the composition design rules grid based whatever negative space positive all the different stuff that goes in to the um like before you start making it look cool, people skip over that and they just start trying to make it look cool and it looks fucked up. It looks like someone's copying some shit. Um, you found the other 10 mil? Oh, nice, okay, that's okay. Um, just look at design stuff from the 80s. You can look at like IBM ads, like 1990s magazine ads. Um, like liter literally, just like look at this. What is this? Some a, sh a commercial, uh, an ad for eighteen dollars shoes. Like some shitty ass company, some you know not good looking model, whatever. But like where the the line that this text is on, the line that this text is on, the text, like the way it's laid out. You know, start looking at stuff like that. That's how you get better at this. Look at this, okay. Start thinking and squint your eyes so that try to strip away, strip away the color, the styling, the fonts, the typefaces, font is a computer file, typefaces, what the actual thing is. Um, try to strip that away, squint at it and see like roughly compositionally where stuff is, what your eye is doing, etc. This, listen, I think that, I hate graphic design and I hate all this stuff, but uh, David Ogilvy. Um, like if you read this, if you read this book, you'll be ahead of the curve with marketing. And I hate this so much. And it's such, it's the, the whole industry's ass. But this is a very sensible man. And he's, he talks about writing advertising. So if you're just a graphic designer, you're not into advertising, then it's, but it's still applicable. He's, the, the, the stuff that he says, it's like 50s. 50s rich guy with a pipe what would 50s guy, rich guy with a pipe say and he says stuff like don't put white text on a black background because it's unreadable like basic shit and the first thing if you're a designer you're trying to make something look cool like step number one is you're gonna oh I inverted it I made it different I put it, oh, look at this. I put white text on black. It's unreadable. 
What would 50s guy with a pipe say who lives in a castle? He, li- he bought a French castle. 50s guy with a pipe said, you do that, it's unreadable. So you have, you have immediately failed by making something white text on a black background. Obviously, there's exceptions to everything. But this guy, I really admire his way of thinking because it's just, it's from, it's from an era when, like, uh, people weren't trying to circumvent logic every which way to look like clever little fucking jackalopes. Trying to, what if I slant the text? What if I make the picture like this? What if I do the, like, just every retarded twist that does not help you achieve your goal. This is it. This is, I would say this is a good book for everybody to read. Like, like all books, there's, it's, you know, 10% of it is applicable. You're not going to read the whole thing and every, every letter is like, oh, this is gold. It's like 10% of it you take with you, but this is a good, this is a good book. His, whatever his, uh, he's got a few of them. They're all kind of the same. Like he wrote Confessions of an Advertising Man and then uh, Ogilvy on advertising is like the same content rehashed. So you can read, you can read either of these. This one might be more like biography or not like, then we got this deal. I think this one is the, on advertising might be the more practical stuff, but you could, you could just read this. This is a good one. And like the way he thinks about advertising, start thinking about design or whatever creative thing you do like that.